Hey, welcome to Men on Everything, our show where it's three guys who have reasonable intelligence talking about things that are happening in the news. I'm Tony Scott. There's Mark Clark. There's Troy Johnson. Fellas, yo. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Well, Kwanzaa has started. Kwanzaa, yeah. Kwanzaa starts on the 26th. Well, it's coming. I'm just saying. You know, the way, the way we do this show, I should probably say Happy New Year. <laughs> just in case we don't see yeah. you. Let me say to my brothers, Hotep, Assalamu alaikum. Uh-huh. And what's the other one, Troy? Uh, what? Bungaz, what's the other one? Uh, you know, it's a right, a Kwan, what's the greeting in Kwanzaa? Abaragani. Abaragani. My brother is Hotep, Abaragani, and Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> All right, then. <dear. laughs> and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll stop right there. When you hear, yeah. a, knock, when you hear a knock on your door, <laughs> right. I'm sorry, guys. I, I try. I just met. Um, I just met my brother from the Zulu Nation in New York. So it's fresh, fresh in my mind, my brother. Gotcha. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Africa Mabata sends sends his condolences and hellos. <laughs> so Bill Cosby's daughter, Erin. Uh, what? Erin mm. Cosby has decided, or is it? It's Evan. Actually, I think it's Evan. He does have a daughter named Aaron, but this is Evan, who's 38 years old. She has spoken out. Uh -oh. She says, he is the father you thought you knew. The Cosby Show was my today's TV reality show. Thank you. That's all I would say. That's the same, similar to what Camille said. She said, you know. Yeah, Camille basically said the same thing. The man that you know is, the man that you thought you know is who you know, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, you guys both know my wife and my kids. <laughs> uh, do you think my wife would be <laughs> talking about Mark is the man that you know? Or would, do you think there'd be a silence? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think there'd be silence. <laughs> but I, th I think you keep it pretty real, man. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, no comment. Right. I mean, be like, how about the nationals, man? You, I feel you, Camille. I feel you. I feel you, Evan. I feel you, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The uh, the overwhelming evidence is so strong. I don't know. But but accusations are not evidence. Well, yeah, this, I guess this this is what I had a good conversation the other day with somebody. They said, which which was was interesting. I said they said, well, Camille, what else is she going to do? And I said, well, I said, well, I said, well. Um, I, 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 I'm kind of shy. He said, I said, he said, I think she knew he what he was up to. I said, you think he, he, she knew that he had, you know, he was raping women. He said, no, 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 no. He allegedly. knew he, right. Allegedly. He knew that she knew that he was messing around and she's known a long time. I said, okay, but that's different. He said in some women's eyes or some people's eyes, it's about the same thing. I was like, what? But. Do you guys agree that the, the wife of a famous person whose husband may be uh, cheating or whatever just kind of says, uh, you know, it is what it is? And do you, do you also agree that it's the same thing? Like, if you know your husband is a philanderer versus knowing your husband is doing all this kind of stuff, are you, are you to blame if you just kind of give him a pass or say, or turn a blind eye? Well, I think you're talking about two different things. Are you talking about infidelity versus drugging women and then raping? That's, them? that's, I, two that's entirely, that's I entirely different things. Right. I know men. I know men who are married and who have admitted to cheating and admitted they can't help themselves. But rape is something they would never ever. That would. That's just a whole. Rape is an act of violence. Yes, I agree. Well, let me you ask know, you this. Even when you let drug me... someone and then you rape them, that's still an act of violence. Me... What Camille says. I mean, what else would you expect her to say? Right? She's been married to the man for, if not over 50 years, at least 50 years. They've been married a very long time. And she probably knows that he has, in fact, been unfaithful to her. She probably doesn't think that it's rape. Like I said, there's a huge difference. And, you know, these these accusations are just that. There is no proof. Where's your proof? Well, let me Where is your proof that, that he actually raped you? Where's your proof? I mean, even... Oh, uh, I think uh, Evan Cosby says that 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 you know. Talk. I think she was talking about Beverly Johnson. How is it that you remember certain things, but you don't remember other things? And it was at the same at the same location, at the same thing. You remember everything, but you don't remember 
anything else happen. How do you do that? I mean, you selective amnesia. How does that work? She's defending her father. She said, you know, she said it's, it's a horrible thing to rape someone, but it's also a horrible thing to accuse someone when you know it's not true. Well, let me ask you. And unless you well, have evidence, well, where, where do we go yeah, from here? you got 20-something yeah. women saying that they were victims of Bill Cosby. Well, let me let me interject. But where's your evidence, Troy? Well, as I was going to say, there was, there is uh, now, along with the allegation, there is uh, there are a pair of witnesses that support a claim that the woman at the Playboy Mansion, that they may have seen that situation. That's what the lawyer is saying. Um, and then, so, <clears throat> you know, now you got a little bit of meat going on the bone. Um, I mean, that's all going to have to be vetted out, which is actually what Camille Cosby was talking about. She's like, you know, uh, she compared this to the UVA um, rape scandal that, that Rolling Stone screwed that, that story up about. She's saying, you know, you're not vetting these people. They're giving their allegation, and the media is running with what they have to say without doing any background information. So, I mean, everything is in a pickle right now. It seems like, um, you know, of course she's going to stand up for her husband. Of course his, ch his children are going to stand up for him. I think the thing that I find interesting about this conversation is people are very torn on this situation. Obviously, a lot of people feel like Bill Cosby did it. And, uh, and there, are too many, there are too many people out here floating around that... Uh, that have an allegation of some sort. Maybe not all of them are on point, but come on, where there's smoke, there's fire. Then there's, a, then there's another group of people who completely believe, and I've had a couple of conversations with people like this, who believe that Bill Cosby has been set up 100%. They believe, they be, they believe that, that uh, you know, the, the question kind of was, who did Bill Cosby piss off in Hollywood to get this kind of situation uh, put down on him? Uh, and, and, I, and I'm like, you know, it seems difficult to try to control. You can't really control the news, the you know, the the new the flow of news in that kind of way. And would you need 20 accusers to do that? 20 plus to do that? If you wanted to railroad Bill Cosby. You could have you, you could have done that with a couple of people. Not only that, the observation I also thought was interesting was this story was huge before the Ferguson verdict, and completely went away, obviously because the news the news story changed. But then, bam, more accusers after that kind of died down. He's right back at the focal point of the news. So, well, you know, to to me that where there's smoke, there's fire. I think is at least worth investigating. Well, here, here's the here's the here's the problem. I think, um, and, and then I guess the uh, I, I guess what happens is the the you know, Bill Cosby is has all the money in the world and had had all of the moral clout in the world. This comes out right. The first five or six come out. Okay. Bill Cosby goes into saving my reputation mode and uses all the access that he has, because he's innocent, to not only say, hey, this is ridiculous and a setup, but I will not stand by and let my reputation and my family's reputation be besmirched by these accusations. By the way, that's the first time I ever used the word besmirched. Very nice. Now, now. He's got all the money in the world. All you got to do is say, I didn't do it, and book every damn show. And even if you, even if you, you know, even if people say, well, he, he didn't want to, you don't want to start doing that because you're, it's kind of like the, the battery, you know, the when did you stop beating your wife argument. No. If he go, if he made the rounds to all the people that he knows and, and sat down and took the interview, we would all have a different view. Then your family comes up and says, hey, my husband is the same person that you guys grew up with. Now, he, he stopped it. You know what I mean? What, 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 started, <laughs> what started this whole momentum was he didn't stop it. And unlike most people, like us, if it was us, we'd just be like, no, I didn't do it, or whatever. He could have stopped it. So that's the big question, Tony. That whole thing about, 
legally what no the bigger question about before the legal question is why did Bill Cosby the most powerful African American man in Hollywood let this happen to him why didn't he stop the, the interviews they wanted the interviews they did not deny him interviews he didn't take them yeah. you don't want to talk about it so why, we, I, I think go ahead but I, I think I think that on many levels we have to remember and, sue, that, and he could sue all of them too he could sue everybody too go ahead yeah, but I mean, um, I was going to say that to me, it's like w w Bill Cosby, the level that he's at, you, you just can't come out and say, I didn't do that. There has to be a strategy. And it, it, it appears that the strategy that he went with, may it may have backfired by keeping silent for as long as he did. He's, he has started to speak out a little bit. But when like, and I spoke about this the last time we did the show, was like when you're Bill Cosby in, in this situation, you know, everything you say uh, potentially could be used against you in 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 a in a, in a lo potential lawsuit. Now, the question becomes then, though, how can there be a lawsuit because the statute of limitations has clearly run out, both civilly and criminally. Right. You know, so I don't know exactly what strategy he was using to employ. Maybe he was just hoping, "I'm Bill Cosby. I'm the most powerful black man in Hollywood. This will blow over." Maybe maybe that was a strategy, and if it was. He sadly miscalculated because he didn't take into account the power of social media. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, Kathy Lee Gifford, Kathy Lee, she was on TV today saying that Bill Cosby tried to kiss her some years ago when she was his opening act on his comedy tour. <laughs> and that he fixed her some cappuccinos. And she he tried to kiss her, but she says, No, Bill, we're friends. And he says, Okay, good night. This is what she said this morning. By so the way, it's like not drink that cat. <laughs> By the way, do not drink cappuccino and good night. You know, so so what was the purpose? <clears throat> Kathy Lee's experience, nothing happened. So at this point, to me, her experience that she talked about this morning was nothing more than piling on. Mm. Well, but you're piling on. Well, Tony, that, 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 that doesn't help anything. Well, Tony, you're coming from the perspective of an old school point of view. <laughs> no, no. Tony represents the old way, Troy. The end, the inward mall, our inward mall way. That's over, what? Tony. At the end of the day, his ass. It's like it's like yes, people are piling on because you realize you got hoodwinked. First of all, Bill Cosby should have been selling coffee. As many damn coffee drinks he's made in his lifetime, <laughs> he could open his Starbucks. <laughs> yes. That was his real calling, <laughs> sleep, sleepy Starbucks. <laughs> but yeah, I think, yeah, Tony, like you said, I think he totally, if that was a strategy, that was the worst strategy in the world. And, very, and that's very possible that it was the worst. It was the worst strategy in the world because now, and even your, 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 your wife and your daughter speaking up before you doesn't make sense either. Here's the other thing. If, if, let's say Bill Cosby didn't rape, right? Let's say he just was unfaithful, right? Um, and your wife comes out and makes a statement that he's the same guy that you thought he was. See, I think, I think that doesn't play. I think that would play. I think the wife and the kids are off too. It doesn't play. At the end of the day, at the very least, Bill Cosby was not the guy we thought he was. At the very least, he was not the guy we thought he was. And y'all telling me that he was the guy <laughs> that I thought he was. You know what I'm saying? So I think it doesn't it doesn't really play. So we don't believe y'all. But it sounds like you guys are just saying what you need to say because obviously, uh, if he was the guy we thought he was, this stuff wouldn't even be in, in, in play. You know. So and you're right, Tony. Legally, he's he's clear. Legally, you're clear. But in the court of public opinion, ain't no coming back from all this. And I think again, if he didn't in fact do it, it's time to speak up, Bill. It's time to sit down with Oprah, somebody you trust, and say, "What the hell happened, Bill?" You know. So I didn't do it. Like I said, uh, uh, Troy and Tony, the, the, it's expired as far as the charges are concerned. He could sit there and say, look, I didn't do it. You well, know, but he could still face a civil suit. There's no statute of limitations on that. Yeah, but there's, yeah. No, but there's no statute there's, of limitations on civil issues? Huh? On a civil lawsuit? I don't believe. But the evidence still is that, there. That's, that's, that's the plan that Gloria Allred, who is the lawyer for some of Well, Gloria Allred wanted him to waive his statute of limitations and then put a hundred million dollars in a in a in a in a in escrow yeah. that would be passed out to the victims. So of course, right. if it's a hundred million dollars, she gets thirty of that because she right. gets a third, right. Right? right? But 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 you know the the uh, the 
the police department in Los Angeles said they would listen to these allegations as well. So, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a way. Uh, yeah, but listen, listening and actually being able to do anything about it, I think, are two different things. Uh, I, this I do know is that he will not go to jail because the, clearly the statute, criminally, the statute of limitations have run out. The, I think the only crime where the statute of limitations, there are no statute of limitations, is murder. Right. Yeah. You know, so. So, Mark, you're in New York and the the, uh, the protests have been going on there, man. There was a press conference yesterday where police were pretty angry at protesters for how they were treating the police, and you're you're there, man. And I know, I know that you know you you everywhere you've ever lived, you kept your ear to the ground, man. So what what is exactly going on in New York, man? Is it more than what we're seeing on television? It's weird, man. I, you know, I have to admit, it's kind of like, it, you know, for a change, uh, Tony. I'm actually, uh, it's going on in New York, and people are showing up in huge numbers, and people are. You know, as you see on the news, are you know kind of taunting the police. Uh, people are fed up, but the other people who go about their business every day and aren't even aware of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I catch the train into Manhattan every day, and other aside from when there's protests and the the, the the traffic situation, it's almost like it's two different worlds. There's people who are plugged in and participating, and and and, and on top of it. You know, other people who are just going up, going about their day. And I think, sadly, that kind of speaks to how we are as Americans, you know. And so it doesn't feel, I guess, you know, when you, have, when you have smaller places, smaller cities, you can really feel it everywhere. i got to be honest, guys, I really didn't feel it. I, I was, so yeah, last, this weekend, they had the big protest. I was at the Black Expo, so I missed that. I don't have a TV at home. So I didn't even realize there were tens of thousands of people. I, I, I was asking afterwards, hey, how'd that turn out? You know what I mean? I wasn't even aware of what's going on. So, uh, yeah, it, it's going down, but at the same time, New York's still New York, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I, I know that, like, over the weekend, like, uh, Andrew Hawkins of the Cleveland Browns wore this T-shirt, Justice for Tamir Rice, and there was another gentleman's name on the shirt, too, and the uh, Cleveland Policemen's Union is demanding an apology from the Cleveland Browns, from the NFL, and from Andrew Hawkins. The same as this uh, turd that lives here, Jeff Rorter did here in, in uh, St. Louis. And, uh, uh, you know, and to a degree, I mean, the NFL says, no. Bam. What else? Anything else? Good, you know, good, and I would imagine it's going to be the same thing involving this Cleveland Browns. And the thing to me is, you know, if the, if the police do not realize that there is a problem. And, and, and to be clear, police do an incredible job under incredible circumstances. They do, they do great work. Most of them, by far, most police officers are great officers. But if they're not willing to admit that there, that there is some lousy police officers, we're never gonna move forward this con- with this conversation, all right? right? Justice for Tamir Rice. The coroner ruled it a homicide. The police officer who shot Tamir Rice in Cleveland should never have been a police officer. His last job as a cop in another municipality, they, they put that in memo and saying, this dude don't even need to be handling a gun. Mm. He is that unstable. And yet he got a badge and a gun in Cleveland and he shot this little boy. And for the police not to realize, you know what? This is a bad situation. You know, we need... Because it, to, to say that... Andrew Hawkins cannot exercise his right of free speech without repercussions is is insane. It's insane. It's unrealistic. And it actually, I think, hurts more than, than anything, that the police still do not get it. And, right. The death of a 12-year-old. And, 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 and the uh, shout-out to, to the, uh, the, the football player. He so eloquently uh, exp- ex- explained why he wore the shirt. I don't know if you guys have, have read that. It's on Facebook. He, very well. So much it brought a tear to the old eyes, man. He he, yeah. he explained exactly his fear of having a two year old. Mm. You know, and, and and the thing about I use this analogy as you guys know I'm around barber shops and any place I can talk I've I talk so I have analogies already. But I always talk about the the officer friendly versus the militarized police we face today. This was a prime example, you know. I think about my small town, Springfield, Illinois, and uh, you know, we had officer friendlies there. Like the cops, 
with people who grew up there and they knew you and knew your grandparents and stuff. So I can imagine an officer pulls up. The kid is by himself. So it's not like you have a whole bunch of things going on, right? Now, you know, again, Officer Friendly would have probably known the kid or found out what was going on. He would have asked somebody else. He would have drove over and said, hey, you know, so-and-so, you get the call, you know what I'm saying? You start asking around the neighborhood. They say, oh, that's so-and-so. That ain't no real gun or whatever. You know what I'm saying? There's a conversation. Well, even if not that, you pull up and you check out what's going on. This guy pulled up, and you saw the video. He like pulled up and just killed the kid, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, it's like there, there was no human connection at all. Nothing inside of this guy realized, how old was he? 12 to 16? Oh, he's a teenager. He's a kid. He's a, he's a kid. And so yeah. um, I think that's what speaks to it. It's like the, the militarization of the interaction changes the dynamic of trying to, you know, uh, trying to find out what's going on and taking control of the situation versus killing the enemy. That's what, that's what it feels like when you're talking about uh, black men and the police. You're killing the enemy. You know, Eric Garner, get on the ground or we're going to take you out. We're not listening to you. We're not having a conversation. We don't know what's going on. You know, get on the ground or we're going to take you down versus right. finding out what's going on. Hey, hey, you know, again, same thing, situation with Eric Garner. Situation, neighborhood, the guy was a, earlier in the day a hero. They thought they got it mixed up. They say, hey, what's going on, man? Oh, uh, nothing, da, da, da. No, instead, they want to put you down first before we can even have a conversation, and then it all goes haywire. And when things started to go haywire, nobody stepped back. It wasn't, it wasn't an assault. It wasn't, he wasn't fighting. He wasn't trying to run. We're, okay, hold on, let's go. Let's go. What's going on? So officer friendly versus the new military police, is, it's very frightening, you know, very frightening. I think that's important. That's why it's important that these marches and protests have, have continued, that people are continuing to express themselves. And, you know, there's that rub where, you know, here in Washington, there are protests every day, you know, along with the protests that Al Sharpton and, and other folks had on Saturday, all of the, all of those uh, uh, big stories that we've followed, the Tamir Rice, uh, Eric Garner, um, uh, uh, Trayvon Martin's parents, uh, mom was here. All of those stories, all of those folks were here in Washington, D.C. over the weekend. And I think for those that are interested in figuring out what's next, because, you know, a lot of people will show up in March or make a sign and they're like, is this working? <laughs> you know, the, there were some clear messages that they were trying to deliver at these marches. And they were saying that, you know, we have to call on Congress to address this issue of police brutality in America. Because if Congress does it, then you can change the law in America. Poli different police jurisdictions, you know, the way they police in Cleveland is different from the way they police in St. Louis or Seattle. Um, you know, the, they calling for uniform police change is, is what they're looking for. And, and actually, uh, I know that since you've had all of these protests, I know uh, in New York, for example, they've, they've called for a top to bottom, um, you know, they're going to redo all of the training for New York City police officers. And they're, they're going to, you know, talk about that community policing, not that, you know, broken window police where folks, where cops roll up and they just, you know, we see something happen and then we just, we start making something happen and it doesn't turn out well. But that community policing that Mark kind of mentioned as well, having people who live in the community become police officers, that not only has a, po a positive result on the way policing is handled, but think about how you're changing a community, like a Ferguson, Missouri. There are people that, that live there that need a job, that are qualified enough to get a job on the police force. And there's no excuse for it not happening. So, you know, those kinds of changes are on the horizon, but it's going to take people paying attention and, and, you know, you can call your Congress person, you can call your city council person and, and voice your opinion about, you know, what you think about the way policing is done. Every city has a, uh, has a civilian oversight board with the police department. You know, I think people should all also, in, you know, take a look at that because they review situations 
that happened in the police department. And they, not the police chief necessarily, but the, the civilian review board weighs in on a lot of those cases. So, you know, there's things that people can, can kind of keep an eye on. Tony, I was just... reading about uh, Geraldo uh, Rivera's comments on Fox, where he says, uh, you know, black people kill, kill each other more than police kill black people, but they refuse to address that issue. Mm -hmm. Black people do too. He went on black to say people do that too. The only occasion where black folks come together is when they unite to play the victims. Mm -hmm. He also criticized LeBron James for wearing a Can't Breathe t shirt, saying <clears throat> he should have worn a t shirt that says, Be a better father. To your sons instead of I can't breathe. Well, Tony, you know. Tony, how do you feel? That's your people, Tony. Geraldo Rivera. I feel. No, that's not, he's, that's not my people. Like, you know what? I, I don't know. I mean, I work, you know, I, I work with okay. you, know, I work you with can't. Them. You you can't censor. You can't tell people what to wear. Okay. Your 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 perspective, your reality is not. Uh, I've been saying this for a long time. Until we learn to understand that our life isn't like everybody else's life. And that we're different. We have different situations. We have different circumstances. Black folks know that black folks kill black folks more than the police kill black folks. They know that. And they know that. White people kill. And, and people. unless you're you're involved in the black community, I mean, if you you wouldn't know that there are countless town hall meetings and symposiums and and workshops about how to better the community and reduce this black on black crime. You know, I mean, it's been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. But unless you're involved, you really don't know because it's not your reality. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think about what he said? Well, I, I think, again, with the misnomer is that white people kill more white people than... But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We only talk about black-on-black -black crime. It's white-on-white -white crime, Indian-on-Indian -Indian crime. It's, it's, I think we talked about this last week. It's the same. My number is like 90 or 97 percent. Their number is 82 percent of most white people are killed by white people. So... You know what I mean? It's like that. That's all just smoke and mirrors. Now, um, he, again, like you said earlier, Tony, when I was doing my Bill Cosby analogy, he's mixing apples and oranges. You, you, you're talking about two different conversations. Yes, there's a whole bunch of shirts. There's a whole bunch of shirts LeBron James can wear. But we're not talking about that. You know, what I mean? we're talking about what's going on right now, Geraldo. You know, and so that's what that's what people do, and it just it just adds to. You said piling on. It's really just piling on. It take it takes the conversation in a whole different direction with a group of people who don't who, who don't even it's like Troy you, when you mentioned your comment about Congress and about um, the government and, and the government doing something that's the thing about that's when people's conservatives talk about I want the government out of my business and all this and that people of color since the civil rights movement have relied on the government to save us from the system mm -hmm. so our take on Big government is much different than a, a, a white male who's never had to deal with the stuff we had to deal with. So that's one thing, you know, it colors it differently. And then secondly, Geraldo on these shows, you know, these shows that typically will have no black faces, all white conservatives talking about what black people need to do. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know it's, it's insulting when he says things like that because, yes, we, I feel like we say it, we say it and we, we can say it because we are not only uh, uh, people who have been victimized by it, but we're also people who genuinely care and genuinely have a track record of trying to make positive change within the system. But if you're sitting out on your, if you're sitting, sitting out in your, uh, you know, you know, on your perch and you're, you're analyzing this situation and not adding any positive information to it, then I feel like F you, Geraldo, and he's a coworker at my, at my job, but F you, Geraldo, I said it again. You know, it's just, you're not helping, you're not helping anything. He knows that, you know, he's made a lifetime of, of, of standing on the back of oppressed people and making comments. So, you know. Well, I think I'm going to take a, a slightly different track and, and say that, you know, the issue here <clears throat> is the uncomfortability that we have, black folks have, when, when, when our our community problems begin to get aired out. We get real sensitive about that. Uh, you know, on a completely different note, Bill Cosby knows all about that because he started, he started, you know, hitting, uh, hitting back against the community and people were like, what the hell is Bill doing? So we've seen this, we've seen this story many times. 
And, you know, it's easy for uh, a prognosticator like a Geraldo Rivera uh, to push those buttons that really make us uncomfortable. And, and folks are worried about what's the response going to be to that, to what was said, as opposed to what's going to happen in the community. What are we going to do about it in the community? When you say those things to other groups about whatever their, whatever their, the warts that they have in their community, people are like, yeah, we know it. And it's not, it's not, it's like, we'll deal with it. We're going to fix it. We're going to whatever. But it's not internalized and like, oh man, they talk. You know, you know, somebody, you know, you feel like somebody's right. talking about it. It's, we take it a lot more personally than I think. It it just is a waste of time. Every every comment it doesn't necessarily have to be answered to. That's true. You know, I mean, if, it, as Tony said, we know what the problem is. Oh, you're overstating something that we already know is going on. Would it have been different if it had come from an African American TV uh, personality, news person, contributor? I mean, well, uh, those those people, I think, are in a situation where they feel like, "Well, why is he telling? Why is he telling our story?" <laughs> <You know>? So <laughs> that's a great know, point, Trey. Th there, there's. It seems like people are worried about getting caught up in appearances, oftentimes, rather than really addressing what the problems are. Now, I'm, I'm just making a broad, general statement. I'm not accusing anybody. But, but there definitely is a problem with that. We're not really focused on the real issue. You know, what's important here is that people are marching for change in America. That is your absolute right as an American citizen to voice your opinion, to protest, to, to ask for change. Congress, you know... Congress is supposed to do one job. They are supposed to put forth a budget. That's their job. Yeah. That is Congress's job. Right. The other aspects of Congress, the the uh, are, are completely secondary to the one reason why they gather annually. So most Americans don't really pay attention to that. And we get caught up in what what Congress wants to do. Again, you're talking about people that are supposed to be representing you. And if you're not getting what you want, I've said, Mark's heard this nine million times. I, you know, <laughs> if you're not getting what you want out of the person that you elect, you elected, then you need to fire them. And and yeah. the thing the thing that I've always found interesting about this is if you talk to any person who's been elected to office, a senator a congressman, a mayor, a city council person, to a man and a woman, they will say exactly what I said to you. Hey, if I'm not doing the job, fire me. And you know why they're comfortable in saying it? Because they know y'all ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. They know and it. Troy, say that for years. We used to put it, Troy, we used to, we used to, put it to the test on the show, um, like when something was going down and we had, we had, we called... They're off it because they never get calls. All of a sudden, they got 60 calls because the radio station said to call. You get a quick response. Every single time we did that, we got a response because the average per the people don't call. People don't check in. So if they, if they get 60 calls, they're like, what is going on? You know, and that just kind of spoke to that. Yeah, they're not people. They're not representing. Obviously, look at Congress. They're not represent they don't give a damn about us. Uh, they're not representing us. But again, like Troy said, if you're not stepping up, was the last time you called your congressman? Was the last time you corresponded with someone you elected? Uh, probably never. Well, there, there, there's the answer. You know? There it is. Because what you're not doing, somebody else definitely is. There are people that make that phone call every day, talk, and 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 they worry their congressman. They they badger them. They're like, they know my need, name. I need this done. And you know, I mean, how many speeches have you heard from the president on down when they say, you know, I met this woman who lives in Iowa City, and she blah, 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 blah. It's a personal connection and a personal story about something that's happening to their constituent. Well, if you're not being a constituent and not participating and not telling them, tell them what's going on, they don't know about uh, the fire hydrant that keeps getting open in front of your house that's killing your grass. They don't know about, you know, a trash can that's not, that's overflowing because... That uh, you know, people are dumping from another community in your in your trash can or whatever the case may be. 
They don't know about it because you're not saying anything about it. So uh, this uh, Sony email hacking, <laughs> not even just email, just started out as something else, but then they got to the emails, and they say there's a lot more to come. Uh, they said, is, they said uh, really has gotten people's attention. <laughs> uh, Amy Pascal runs Sony Entertainment, and some saying that she's going to have to resign based on some of her emails. She's going to have to resign based on exchange. based on the look. What was that again? She's going to have to resign based on that look that uh, that Brad Pitt's wife gave her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Angelina Jolie was like, I mean, "Really? <laughs> is, is 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 it? Are, are we going into a, an area here? I mean, what was exchanged and everything? I get all that, but they were private emails. Is there is there a certain expectancy of of we should this is off limits or I, I guess not the way people are going in on on everybody involved in this well, well let, me tell you, let me tell you something in 2014 this is troy johnson tip for you if you want to be racist if you want to make some kind of comment uh that we all know you shouldn't be making my suggestion is you do it ear to ear <laughs> do it ear to ear <laughs> hey look come here let me tell you something <laughs> you know, just because <laughs> if you do it on a phone, if you do it on the internet, hello, all of that is in cyberspace. We remember that word, cyberspace. Right. So yes. it's it's. So the lesson the lesson here is don't trust emails, don't trust uh, phone calls. If you're trying to if you're trying to be <laughs> trying to be racist. You want to show somebody a titty, and you're worried about it. Do it in person. Don't right. do it over the internet. Uh, you, you just, you know, we've we've seen this five million times. So and I, I think I think the I think the issue here is, you know, uh, the folks at Sony are pushing back because, you know, now all this information is out there, and they're they're threatening the press. If you release any more of this information and report on it, then we're going to sue you. Well, it's part of a news story. Are you gonna, are you gonna, and you're gonna scare the press. Come on, bring it on. Yeah, you can never scare the press. Is not scared, hardly ever. No, if ever. No, please. It's, what's 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 frightening is how stupid uh, people, higher ups seem to be. Troy Johnson and I were able to intercept. We 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 witnessed an email calling for the demise of our job. <laughs> That eventually did happen, and it was amazing to see that insight into when people want to get rid of you or whatever, and how conversations and how they, go, and how it's justified. Right. You know, it, it was. It was. And like, how they lie, and how they lie in denial, like Sony's doing right now. <laughs> yes, and you know, and you're right. You know, Mark, to to experience it firsthand, it's interesting because. You know, basically, it, it feels like, you know, somebody's like sitting around on a Saturday, you know, thinking about their job, and then they come up with a bright idea. I know, I'm going to scuttle our morning show, <laughs> so I can do what I want to do. Mm. You know, it, it didn't take into account what we did. It didn't, it, it didn't take into account the kind of work ethic that we had. You know, and I think the thing that was funny the, that about the demise of the Big Fat Morning Show was. While people were smiling in our face, lying to us, and uh, and plotting what the next chapter for the station was going to be, we had some of the highest numbers that we ever had. You know, and I, which, which was kind of interesting is like you know, and we still we got blown or I got blown out at least at the time. But, you know, <laughs> well, mine came later. I mean, sure. yeah. Oprah, Oprah was on Entertainment Tonight last night saying that she was not going to stand in judgment of people whose comments were were private, and and, and I, you know, I'm surmising now, but she was she was summarizing. She was saying that that you know that it isn't fair to do that because these emails were not intended to be public, and therefore we shouldn't judge these folks on that. But then you also have to realize. You know, Oprah's got skin in the game. Though. Of course, I, yeah. to you know, I, I, I she may be the most powerful woman in entertainment or whatever, but she's still got skin in the game, right? And she still needs 
Sony to help her make movies. She's not going to spend all her money making movies. <laughs> she, she needs, you know, she needs the studio, so she's going to walk that line. I, well, and I think we have to keep that in mind, right? I, I think you're right, Tony. I, I, I saw uh, Seth Rogen, who's in the film, was on the Howard Stern show, and he was talking about, you know, you know, Seth Rogen over the top, you know, just loud, you know, I, you know, these, these emails are that, you know, he's the kind of guy that, at least in presentation, you know, as an as a character, would give a damn. Who cares? I can hear him <laughs> saying, "Who cares if they got the email?" But he works in Hollywood, so yeah. so he had that same kind of fire. But he was like, you know, this is this is illegal. You know, it's like it's like mm-hmm. somebody handed him that memo. And Howard Stern was there to back it up. I, I b- agree. These are people's <laughs> personal emails. You shouldn't be, this should not happen. Americans should be upset about it, blah, 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 blah. Come on, man. Well, let me, let me say this. This is our, our, our teaching or learning moment, whatever you want to say. Because I think when, you, when this has happened to you, as it happened to me in Troy, um, something happens inside. And you realize whatever you're doing, Whatever job you're in that you love so much or hate so much, whatever situation that you really enjoy, realize that that person who's above you not only has full control over your life, <laughs> they don't like they don't like you as much as you think they do, or they don't hate you as much as they think they do. They don't care about you as much as you think they care. Get your life. Get you know what I mean. Focus on the things that are important to you, your family, what you want to do. No matter how cushy or how great that job is, that person above you doesn't really give a damn about you. Nobody loves you more than you love yourself. So take the take the, uh, the criticism and the the positive comments with a grain of salt, and always be conscious of that because I think that's the best thing. Because you have a certain sense of I have a friend, I have a friend that I'm very close to. There's going to be some changes in her situation. And, you know, she doesn't necessarily want them, but it is what it is because you don't own it and it's not yours. Yeah. So always be aware of that and don't get lulled into that sense. And when these emails come out, that's what happens, I think, you know. It's a chance for you to see uh, candidly what people think about you. And even if you're Angela Jolie and have all the money in the world, it proves that it still hurts. It still, yeah. it still, it still you know, makes you feel less than. And, you know, look at uh, the, the situation... Uh, that piggybacked off of that with Kevin Hart, who was wrapped, <laughs> who was wrapped up in in those conversations uh, that were leaked. So he he said, you know, hey, you know, I'm not gonna let I'm none of this is is, is uh, impacts me in in the kind of way I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna give any power to any of this blah 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 whatever. And I'm making I'm doing my own thing. I'm making my life happen. I'm reaching my dreams. Sony was like. <laughs> 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 Who knew that yeah. Kevin Hart could be shut down? Kevin Hart got something to say every day of the year. <laughs> and you haven't heard him for three or four days now with a movie coming out. Right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, shut well, him down. that's one thing about men on whatever. We will not be stopped. <laughs> we own this ish. We're, right, Tony? We're, 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 we're independent. Right, we're, Tony? Not, we're not distributed by Sony or anybody, right. man. So Or anybody. <laughs> anybody at all. So so we're at about 43 minutes, man. What do you guys have? <laughs> it just it just you know, it just hit me the the um the twelve year old really for some reason, man, it's just it's really been it's it's really got me, you know? It's just like the Tamir Rice thing? Yeah, it's just so yeah it's so inhumane. I mean a 12 year old dude it's just like i mean this guy this little boy was tried convicted and executed in two seconds and you, literally in two seconds he was tried and executed by by someone who had no business with a badge or a gun you know what got me man i, I thought about <laughs> all of us as little boys man they showed a video and he grabs like a snowball and throws it you know what i mean it's just like yeah. you're hanging out with this fake gun doing what boys do and man so sad you know and, and th- that 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 one and then um yeah to be honest the, the and, and tony i feel what you're saying but the the camille cosby's uh that kind of surprised me because i guess it's hard it's hard for me to I, again i i think i my expectation was that bill cosby would face face it 
And the fact, like you said, uh, Tony, his strategy is a part of his strategy. I just felt like it's just the worst strategy in the world. And, and, and Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that on his level, there, there, has, there has to be some sort of strategy because the stakes are higher than you, me, or Troy could ever imagine, you know? So, and I would imagine that, that you know, based on if he says, if he said anything, if he even said, I remember having dinner with, with Beverly Johnson or one of these other accusers and stuff, that potentially could not, now that opens up an investigation. Now that's like, okay, let's go back to this restaurant. Let's see who remembers the, how, what, was, was, was she acting normal? And then towards the end of the day, was she acting like she was on something? Aha, uh -huh, now she was acting that way. So based on anything he says, it, and I'm just guessing here, right? Yeah. I, I'm just guessing that it could go in so many different directions. That's why I have been saying that everything he's saying about this has to be strategized. And it has to be like, it literally has to be, I mean, it has to be a home run every time because he can't, he can't afford anything else because the stakes are so high. Am I off the mark here? Yeah, probably, but I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know. I, I didn't do it. I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't do it. I did not do it. <laughs> I'm innocent. I'm the man you thought I always was. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, that's a bad book. I'm I sorry. mean, you know what? And you're right. Sometimes sometimes the simplest thing may take care of the whole thing. You're exactly right. I, I, all I'm saying is I don't know. May, maybe there was a strategy that was badly used, maybe not. Maybe he's working by himself. I can't imagine that he is. Well, and, and you're exactly right. Sometimes you can say, you know, four words, I didn't do it's it. Looking like and that that could be enough. I don't know. Yeah, unless he did I mean, do the it. court of public opinion is so, is on steroids now because of social media. It's looking like he's working by himself, in my opinion. It does look like he's working by you himself. Know, he shows up and, and, and tells an AP reporter, hey, do you mind not trying to do the story? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a good comment right there. And so I mean, and and Camille, you know, Camille was like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> Lord, here we, here we go." You know, I I think I think he's I think you're you're right, Tony. He's not operating in this situation. It's the 21st century, and and I and I was I was saying this to somebody the other day. I was thinking that he would be. A, a guy who was who potentially before all of this came out was about to have a new television show was about to potentially have a, his own network. Uh, I've heard some some rumors about that. Could he could he not be that media savvy in this? I mean, no nobody around. I mean, he he's gonna have he would have to use. Uh, well, actually, I was gonna say he was gonna have to use Twitter. He did use Twitter. But then he didn't use that right either, because that that well. Uh, but I think I think I think older him up too. older uh, folks like him that are in the entertainment business, I think they have completely, for, and, and maybe for good reason. They've under he and in this case, I think Bill Cosby underestimated the the power of social media and the backlash that it created, and I think he underestimated that. And I think a lot of older performers or people in the industry probably do. Uh, because they're kind of late to the game when it comes to social media, you know. And and I think in his situation, he clearly underestimated the backlash that social media would cause in re in regards to him and his brand. Yeah. Well, and conspiracy. Well, Troy, you just you thank you. You just answered my conspiracy question. You said his own network. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was supposed to get his own network. You say, Troy? I've heard. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard. You know, but I mean, we, your, we, we knew there's, there was, there's your answer right there. So, so, so there's the lie right there. So, because that was going to happen, somebody's going to shut him down. Well, I mean, that, that to me, that, that makes perfect sense. You know, Bill Cosby, Oprah's one thing, Bill Cosby's another. And there were rumors that when Bill Cosby, you know, tried to buy NBC, that, you know, that's why his son got killed. That was always been a whatever. But I've never heard that one. Yeah. They said that it was, it was so real. Because you didn't think about it at the time. Bill Cosby was on top of everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. And NBC was for sale, and uh, just kind of, it all went away. But anyway, that's, that's another show, another time. Well, well, there you go. So we'll leave it there then. I guess we're at 50 minutes, so I uh, appreciate you watching uh, Men on Everything. Uh, we do this uh, once a week where we just talk about stuff that's in the news, and if you don't mind sharing this and reposting, that would help us a lot to get the message out there because we're, we're a group of men with 
very little, with a with no advertising budget. So we <laughs> kind of have to rely on social media and you to help us out, though. But uh, you know, we appreciate the love, and it means a lot of thumbs up goes a long ways. And I don't know if I told you guys about how I, I got informed by uh, YouTube that because I had we we had because it's mostly our shows that generate the most views. 150,000 views in three months that it kind of it kind of opened the door a little bit for possibly possibly a consultation with YouTube on how to uh, expand the channel. All right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and that's because, you know, you guys, I mean, I do videos on my own, but they don't get nearly the views that we do as a group. So, you know, I just uh, put that out there. But yeah, it, uh, I, I got informed about that. So that was kind of that was that, 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 that actually that message came on a down day. Mm. And uh, uh, before I started working again, and it kind of lifted my spirit. It, well, it did lift my spirits a lot. It made me feel like so I was doing something right. Well, Tony, uh, you know, working with you guys and and getting it out there. So I think I think you know. Tony, wait a minute. That, you that said we've got over a hundred thousand views. Your thumbs up and you're subscribing to the channel. All that helps to, for us to go in the direction that we want to go to, and that's to be uh, independent of everybody, able to do our own thing. Tony, you're saying we got over a hundred thousand views on YouTube. 150, I think it said we had 150,000 views in the last three months or something like that. Tony, that needs to be on some type of graphic. Hello, <laughs> marketing. I can't do everything, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, put that on some graphic. Put it on something. Put it on something, baby. Let's go. I got to reread the message and all that, but it was something that we, we achieved something in three months that, that opened up the doors. Now, I know that if we can get to 10,000 subscribers which right now we're at about 2,350. But if we can get to 10,000, that will open up a lot of doors for us. And will and actually, it will it would let us use YouTube studios like in Los Angeles for free to do content and stuff using their technology that would take it to a whole nother oh, level. Man, we so, got to do that, man. <laughs> if you can yes. get your friends in New York and your friends in D.C. Yes, and my friends in St. Louis... To just subscribe, well, Tony, this I is the think first we, time we, we will do pretty good. So if you can help us grow the channel of doing that, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. All that means is you're going to get a, a notice that we're. Uh, what are you laughing at me for? Yeah, Tony, it's the first time we've heard that we got this many views. We thought it was six I'm sorry, people, man. Oh man. Say again. It's the first time we heard that we had a hundred thousand views. We, we thought it was like ten people, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we thought we, no. You know, we didn't know people were actually watching this. Oh my God! Let me, yeah, let me get off my inflatable bed and get a, a desk. Well, you know, <laughs> go in and demand a raise today. So, also, uh, my I do I do a tech show called I Tony Tech, which is basic tech news. We're not trying to we're not trying to rebuild computers or explain to you exactly what RAM does. It's just simple tech <laughs> news for for non geeks. It's called I Tony Tech. Actually, it is uh, actually being featured on a weekly basis on with Deluxe Magazine on their website. Go ahead, Tony. So it's called Tony, you need, you, need, you need a PR person, okay? Yeah. And not Bill Cosby's. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Tony. Tony, Tony has Bill Cosby PR person. <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> anyway, anyway, thank you so much for watching. In New York City, that is uh, Mark Clark. In Washington, D.C., that is Troy Johnson. I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis. We are men on everything, and we'll see you next time.